you have a friendship with Elon Musk. Uh, often when I talk to him, he'll bring up how incredible of an engineer and just a big picture thinker you are. He has a huge amount of respect uh, for you. I just, I've never been a fly in the wall between the discussion between the two of you. I just wonder, is there something you guys uh, de debate, argue about, discuss? Is there some interesting problems that the two of you think about? You come from different worlds. Maybe there's some intersection in the in aerospace. Maybe there's some intersection in your new efforts in artificial intelligence in terms of thinking. Is there something interesting you could say about sort of the debates the two of you have? So I think in some ways, we do have a kind of similar background where we're almost exactly the same age and we had kind of similar programming backgrounds on the personal computers and you know, even some of the the books that we would read and things that would kind of turn us into the people that we are today. And I think there is a, a degree of sensibility similarities where, you know, we kind of call bullshit on the same things and kind of see the same uh, opportunities in different technology. And there's that sense of, you know, I always talk about the speed of light solutions for things. And he's thinking about kind of minimum manufacturing and engineering and uh, operational standpoints for things. And so, I mean, I first met Elon right at the start of the aerospace era where I wasn't familiar with, uh, you know, I was still in my game dev bubble. I really wasn't familiar with all the startups that were going and being successful and what went on with PayPal and all of his different companies. But, you know, I met him as I was starting to do Armadillo Aerospace and, you know, he came down with kind of his right hand propulsion guy, and we we talked about rockets. You know, what can we what can we do with this? And it was kind of specific things about like how are how are our flight computers set up? What are different propellant options? I am you know what can happen with different uh, different ways of putting things together. And then, in some ways, he was certainly the biggest player in the sort of alt space community that was going on in the early two thousands. He was. The most well funded, although you know his funding in the larger scheme of things compared to a uh, like a, a NASA or something like that was really tiny. Uh, it was a lot more than I had at the time. I, uh, but it was interesting. I had a point years later when I realized, okay, my like my financial resources at this point are basically what Elon's was when he went all in on SpaceX and Tesla, and there's. I I think in many corners he does not get uh the respect that he should about being a wealthy person that could just retire and he went all in where he was really going to uh you know it, he could have gone bust and there's plenty of people you look at the you know the sad uh, athletes or or entertainers that had all the money in the world and blew it he could have been the the business case example of that but I uh, you know the the things that he was doing: space exploration, electrification of transportation, uh, solar city type things. These are big world level things, and I have a great deal of admiration that he was willing to throw himself so completely into that. Because, you know, in contrast with myself, I was doing Armadillo Aerospace with this tightly bounded. Uh, it was John's crazy money uh, at mm. the time that had a finite limit on it. It was never going to impact me or my family uh, if it completely failed. And I was still hedging my bets working at id Software at the time when he had been you know, really all in there. And uh, I have a huge amount of respect for that. And people do not, the other thing I get irritated with is people that say, it's like, oh, Elon's just, just a business guy. You know, he just got like, he was gifted the money and he's just kind of uh, investing in all of this when uh, he was really deeply involved in a lot of the decisions. You know, not all of them were perfect, but I, uh, you know, he cared very much about engine material selection, propellant selection and I, you know, for years he'd be kind of telling me it's like, get off that hydrogen peroxide stuff. It's like, you know, liquid <laughs> yeah. oxygen is the, you know, is the only proper oxidizer for this. And I, you know, and like the, the times that I've gone through the factories with him, we're, we're talking very detailed things about like how this weld is made, you know, how this subassembly goes together. I, you know, what are like startup shutdown behaviors of the different things. So he is, you know, really in there at a very detailed level. And I think that he is the 
the best modern example now of someone that tries to that can effectively micromanage some decisions on things on both Tesla you know and SpaceX to some degree where he cares enough about it I worry a lot that he stretched too thin that you get boring company and Neuralink and Twitter and all the other possible things there where I know I've got I uh, I've got limits on how much I can pay attention to uh, that I have to kind of box off different amounts of time. And I look back at like at my aerospace side of things, it's like I did not go all in on that. I did not commit myself at a level that it would have taken to be successful there. And I, yeah, and it's kind of a weird thing just uh, like having a a discussion with him. He's the richest man in the world right now, but he, I, you know, he operates on, you know, on a level that is still... Uh, very much in my wheelhouse on a technical side of things. 